10, 9, we have ignition sequence start. Engines on, 5, 4, 3, 2, all engines... Human reaction for the first time we do everything is always amazement. The whole planet stops and everybody gazes upward. It was like that when John Glenn flew. The first moon shots, they got everybody's attention. Apollo 11 was amazing. Apollo 12, hmm, some people watch. And from Apollo 14, 15 through 17, I bet you nobody can remember who they even were that flew. I think what happens is the public has an initial peak of interest in anything that has to do with space exploration, but then it seems to get old hat very quickly and then they're no longer as excited about it, which is unfortunate. I've been told that when you see the Earth floating as a ball in space with the atmosphere being literally a thin blue line, you really get an appreciation for how much you gotta take care of the planet. And you don't get that when you're down here, but when you step back and you see the Earth in perspective and you see how tiny it is and how fragile it is, we start to think more globally and in a more humane way. One of the things that the Apollo era did, especially with that moonrise photo, was it showed people our Earth, a globe, without borders on it. That was a really new idea. Right after that photo came back, we had the Clean Air Act, and we had the Clean Water Act, and we had Doctors Without Borders. What would the Earth have been like now if we didn't have that insight? We're at a time now when a little over 500 people have actually gone to space and can tell you about it. I want to get to a time when 50,000 people have gone to space. It's going to be something that we all see as possible. There are a lot of millennials that are very inspired and feel like the commercial space industry really is their Apollo moment. This is their opportunity to build the sort of next generation of space travel. I think within our lifetime, we'll see humanity put settlements on the moon. We'll absolutely see humans touch down on Mars in our lifetime, there's no doubt in my mind. You'll see a very robust, sort of low Earth orbit economy that's happening with human space travel. And that's something I'm looking forward to helping build. People call Worldview a perspective company. We're putting the Earth in a new perspective. We're developing a capsule that will take space tourists to the edge of space. You'll get in a capsule and slowly ascend with five other passengers and two crew up to 100,000 feet, where you'll stay for a few hours, seeing the curvature of the Earth and the thin atmosphere and the blackness of space. It's meant to be a very accessible experience. When the astronaut core was first announced back in the 1960s, the entire country became electric. You could dream about potentially being one of the initial seven astronauts. If I were to go up in the Worldview flight, the flight itself would be 10 times longer than the first suborbital flight. It's just a wonderful gift that Worldview and other companies, I think, are giving to us to be able to have that experience. The concern that some people express is, if everybody can go to space, it will become sort of cliche. It won't be that meaningful. I think that the experience of going to space and seeing the Earth in that context is a phenomenally important part of everyone's education. When we make space more and more accessible to the general public, more and more people get this idea that we all live on one relatively small planet in the huge sea of space, and in so doing, change how we see our place in the universe. When I looked out of the window of the International Space Station, I saw our planet. And in some way, being physically detached from the only world I ever had known made me feel deeply interconnected with everyone on it. I think a lot of our perceived differences blur into insignificance.